Okay, hello guys. So, I've just received this lovely parcel from Andertons. Um, so I thought I'd do a little unboxing, um, kind of first thoughts, like review type thing um, of this Sire S7. Um, yeah. So, I've been looking at getting one of these for a while. Um, a couple of my students have got this guitar. Um, I actually recommended it to them after seeing the spec online. And uh, from the, the little amount that I've played their guitars, they, uh, they are really nice guitars. So I've been looking forward to uh, picking one up myself. Um, and this one popped up on Anderton's. Uh, it's a B stock model. As it's got a small chip on the headstock, apparently. Um, which, on the photos, it didn't look too bad at all. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, but yeah, so really excited to try it out. But like I say, that the spec of these is insane, even for the, the, the standard price of uh, one of these, the, the spec is ridiculous, so let's get this opened up. But yeah, I thought I'd do a quick kind of initial thoughts and I'll have a, a quick playthrough, see how it sounds up straight out of the box. Um, but yeah, try and get this up. Straight away the finish looks awesome, it's uh, the metallic Sherwood green finish, we'll get some better uh, angles of that in a minute, um, that looks nice, action looks super high, uh, that's, that's extremely high actually, um, I won't adjust anything yet, I'll do a playthrough first without adjusting anything, is it in tune? Yeah, it sounds, sounds pretty spot on, that does. Um, can't even see the chip on the... Oh, just a tiny little, see if you can see that on there. Probably won't show up because of the, the focus, but um, literally just a tiny little dink on the headstock. Um, but yeah, okay, there we have it anyways. I'll uh, get the laptop set up and uh, have a quick playthrough, see what I think.
Okay, so what you've just heard there was the guitar straight out of the box. Um, I haven't adjusted the setup or anything. Um, I just tuned it up slightly. It was slightly out of tune. Um, but yeah, didn't, didn't even need tuning up that much. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying uh, while I was unboxing it, um, I've been looking at getting one of these guitars for a while now. Um, two of my students that I teach have got the same guitar um, but the white version and uh, they're, they're you know I've, from the little that I've played their guitars um, they seem like really really nice guitars um, I recommended those guitars to them based on the specs that I'd seen online um, so we'll just go through some of the specs uh, just in case anyone watching isn't aware um, so it's you know it's a super strap kind of um, guitar um, roasted maple neck which I think is really nice um, the it's, it's quite a I'd say it's it's a medium kind of C shape it's not like thin but it's also not chunky either it's just really comfortable um, neck it's very similar to the shape of my 2002 um, Fender Stratocaster, um, yeah, very similar actually. Um, but yeah, it's it's a nice neck. Um, it's got uh, this like lacquer finish on the fretboard, which if I hold it in the light, I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera, but try and get the reflections which I'm not sure to be honest I'm not sure if I would prefer kind of just like the standard like kind of raw maple um, like unfinished fretboard um, but it's, it's different but yeah it, it does look nice though um, you got the abalone or abalone I'm not sure how you pronounce it um, fretboard markers inlays they look really nice um, but yeah, uh, it's got what uh, Sire call, um, what do they call it, uh, edgeless fretboard, um, which is basically just like a, a rolled um, fingerboard edge, which is really comfy, if it's really nice actually, the feel of the neck is awesome, it's, you know, it does feel very comfortable, um, it's got a bone nut, uh, locking tuners as well, uh, sure if you can see them I'll do some like close-up shots as well uh, to put in the video um, yeah what else we got um, two-point tremolo um, really good quality very smooth um, holds tune really well um, I was just using the trem a minute ago I'm not sure if that was in the video that you'll have just seen but um, but yeah, been using the trem and it holds uh, tune very well. So, you know, it's it's returning straight back to, um, you know, its standard position after dive bombs and pulling up and, and all sorts. Um, HSS pickup configuration. Uh, the pickups are really nice. They they sound awesome actually. Um, yeah, really really uh, good tone from the pickups. I'd say they're they're. They're fairly hot, I would say. Again, comparing them to the HSS pickups in my Fender Strat, which are the bare knuckle uh, 63 veneer board single coils and the VH2 humbucker. Um, so obviously the the single coils in my Fender Strat, they're kind of like um, vintage output, and the uh, the VH2 is like vintage hot. Um, kind of PAF humbucker. Um, these pickups seem slightly hotter than those. Um, we got a coil split on the tone control, which is cool. Um, and standard five-way selector switch. The the controls feel really nice quality. I haven't had a look obviously inside, um, but definitely feels better quality than like your typical kind of like Chinese electronics um, so that's good um, again on the back we've got um, these like 
contoured bits like the the contoured neck heel is really nice I'll try and show that with the the light in um, and the back of the the lower horn is contoured as well so it's super comfortable guitar to play um, but yeah I think that's everything like spec wise but um, yeah on paper it's it's just a brilliant guitar like the spec is fantastic um, so this one was B stock so this one was 409 I think it was around that might have been slightly more slightly less um, but as like recommended retail for these is like 550 to 600 pounds which um, you know I think if I was to look at the spec and without knowing how much they cost I would probably price that closer to the 1000 pound mark um, definitely towards like kind of like the higher end of like the price range um, you know it's comparable to the Ibanez AZ models or um, you know even to look at if, if you used to just kind of look at that and you know you can see the roasted maple the locking tuners it, you know it, it looks you know like a, a Sir or something like that um, like a higher end a much higher end guitar than than what it costs um, yeah so that's the good bits it's not perfect though um, and this one in particular has got some issues so um, I'll go through the things that I feel like apply kind of more generally or would apply more generally to these guitars first um, and those things, you know, they're they're not anything too serious. It's, you know, I think the the reason that these guitars can be in the price bracket that they are um, is, you know, they have to kind of cut costs somewhere, and and it's going to be in in the the smaller details. So, for example, um, you know, the finish looks absolutely incredible. Like I've, I've mentioned, it does look awesome. Um, but if you look a little closer in you know kind of like the neck pocket area the the finish isn't super neat um you know you get some kind of marks around the neck pocket where the finish isn't perfect um what else have we got it's on the back in certain lightings you can kind of see i'm not sure if it's like where it's a multi piece body and it's just the the join of the wood or something trying to show I don't know if that will show up in but you can kind of just see like like almost like vertical lines in the finish I'm not sure what that is but it is noticeable um, but yeah um, what else was the uh, the actually the one thing I forgot to mention about the neck was um, the frets, the fret work, especially the fret ends are awesome. There's no sharp edges, it's super smooth. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. The, the frets themselves, uh, they're, they're not too bad. They're a little bit scratchy in places. So again, that's coming back to those like little details. Obviously, after a little bit of playing, um, you know, that scratchiness will just wear away. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's kind of like the difference between this and like a you know a higher end guitar. Um, other little things, the the finish, the lacquer in the truss rod cavity. Again, you probably won't be able to see that. I might put a close up of that as well. Um, but yeah, the lacquer is just kind of like chipped away in the the truss rod cavity, which that's kind of an interesting one um, just because like, I'm not sure why that would be like that but um, unless actually it is a B stock so whether someone's adjusted that and, and chipped the lacquer there by mistake I don't know so I just had to start the uh, camera going again there just uh, stopped recording um, so yeah where was I um, yeah the truss rod so yeah yeah as I was saying um, it's, it's not a massive issue um, I'd probably overlook that if everything else on the guitar was perfect 
but it's, you know, it's just one of those things, the, the little details. Um, and then again, like if you look closely at the fretboard, you can notice some tooling marks where, where they'll have been polishing the frets or filing the frets and they've just kind of caught the fretboard in a couple of places. Again, it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me personally. You know, I'd, I could live with, you know, a couple of tiny little marks. Um, that's if the rest of the guitar was, you know, spot on. However, with this one in particular, it has got some more um, serious issues. Um, so, as I mentioned, this one what is is a, a B stock model. So I'm not. 100% sure how much of this is related to that or whether you know whether this is just kind of like a bad one of the bunch um, but I'm going to mention the, 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 the things anyway just in case it's you know relevant to anyone um, so firstly first thing I noticed when I was looking over the guitar when I got it out was the action is super high and like not just like a little bit high it's, it's really high um, which straight away I'm kind of thinking, okay, why is it that high? Um, has someone set it that high to try and stop some buzzing or something like that, some fret buzz? Um, and I think the answer to that might be yes. Um, so if I, I mean, you know, it kind of buzzes all over the fretboard. Again, I'm not sure how well you'll hear this um, through the camera, but. Here, yeah, that's you know the notes just not ringing out, but that becomes even worse when you try and do a bend. So even just a, a tone bend, you can't even get a, a, a tone bend. It's completely dead. Um, and like I say, the action's super high right now. So it's, it's not like the action is too low or anything like that. You know something is awry with the guitar. Um, so I was having a look over it and I noticed the Again, I won't be able to show this on the camera right now. I'll probably put a photo of this like now, so you can have a look. Um, but the yeah, the the neck is not sitting flush in the neck pocket, and there's there's a considerable gap between the neck and the neck pocket. Um, and if you look kind of down the guitar this way, the the neck is like at a clear angle to the body, so. Whether that's you know been I don't know assembled incorrectly or something or something doesn't match up measurement wise I don't know um, but it's definitely not right um, so you know I would not like with the action how it is now obviously I can't even bend down here so you know it would be unplayable for me um, it, and it would obviously need uh, it needs more than just a simple setup it need you know a proper kind of disassembling and figuring out what's going on with the neck pocket and all that kind of stuff so that's the the main thing and then there's a couple of other little things like um, the E string is binding in the nut so if you bend you can hear the the E string kind of pinging in and out of the uh, the nut where it's kind of like getting getting trapped um, but yeah I mean that those things are a deal breaker like you know this this guitar is is pretty much you know unplayable basically um which is a real shame because it's you know like i say on paper it's an awesome guitar and you know the other two of these that i've played were flawless they were spot on absolutely brilliant so it's really disappointing but um you know it's it's one of them whether whether like i say this one's just a a bad one of of a bunch or um you know whether it's something to do with this model being a b stock model whether it's you know i don't know i don't know what could have happened to to cause it to be the way it is but yeah it is a shame because i love how it sounds as well it's you know it sounds really really good um but yeah so this one will be going back um i'm probably going to exchange it for I don't know, I might try the S3 actually, um, I've been looking at those as well, um, or I might swap it for another S7, I don't know, I'll have to have a look, but we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, still, overall, again, on paper, they're awesome guitars, especially for the money as well. Um, so they're, they're well worth, you know, considering if you're in the market for something like this. Um, maybe the thing to do would be if, if you can get the chance to go into a store and try try one out and then actually like you know buy the one that you've actually played that I mean that's always better you know regardless what whatever what whatever guitar you buy in if you can try it out you know before you buy it that's that's the way to go um, but yeah whether I don't know I mean could it be a quality control thing like with these guitars being slightly lower price is there like a, you know less quality control I'm not sure um, oh, I wouldn't have thought so I mean the reviews online for these are fantastic and you, you don't really hear much bad stuff about these um, but yeah just a, a strange one though this one maybe it's just an anomaly or I don't know hard to tell um, but yeah definitely still worth worth considering if you're in the market for uh, kind of super strat or they do have uh, like vintage um, kind of version as well which has three single coils so yeah but yeah so if if you're considering buying one um, I hope you found the video helpful um, you know like I say I'll just reiterate you know it's it's worth trying one out if you can and you know if you can try the one that you're actually gonna buy that's that's definitely the thing to do um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully see you next time.